Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordine, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Testimony Tuesdays. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries. We have an insightful show for you today. That's right. So there's going to be a lot of insight and revelation coming forth today. So be sure that you stay tuned with us. Uh, all the way through to the end, because you don't want to miss what's coming at the end of the show today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You don't want to miss it. You know, we, we want you to know, viewers, that we've really been praying for you. We've been lifting up every prayer request that comes into High Tower Ministries. So we want to encourage you to comment your prayer requests below these shows, because we always go back every day and see the new comments that are there. And we are lifting you up. Our whole team of intercessors are lifting you up in prayer for your breakthrough. Amen. And we know today is going to be a day of breakthrough for for many all over the world. They get a chance to watch this broadcast. We want to encourage you to do something before we get into this show, though. We want you to think about someone that really needs a touch from God, someone that's been in deception, someone that really needs clarity, Come on. Uh, needs to know God, and yeah. needs to know God as Father. Maybe yeah. they need an emotional healing. Maybe they need to be set free today. Mm. You may not know all, all their situation or what brought them to their situation that they're in, but we can guarantee that you know someone yeah. that needs to hear from God and needs to hear this message. So take about 60 seconds and send them a message on the social media uh, messenger or email them or give them a quick phone call and say, hey, here's the here's the link to Hightower Ministries. This is our Testimony Tuesday show. And we know it's going to really bless you. So watch it. And, uh, we, you know, because, you know, the word doesn't come back void. That's right. The Bible says the word won't return void, but mm -hmm. it'll do what it was sent forth to do. And we're going to share the yes. word of God, to, you know, for you today. And and we know that God's going to do something beautiful come to trans. On form lives and yes. bring revelation, bring right. insight. So please do your part, do your part because God is really doing great things through high term ministries Amen. all over the world. Lives yeah. are being changed. People are receiving their breakthrough. We're getting testimonies all the time of, of people getting their financial breakthroughs. They're getting healed by the power of God. Their lives are being changed. They're Amen. getting set free. Amen. That's right. That's right. Today's episode is the colors of his character. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> you know, we're going to be talking about the character and the nature of God. And yes. you know, Jesus said that the father and I are one in, you know, Jesus taught on this wise after he and his disciples had received the Last Supper. He foretold of Peter's denial. Uh, and then he shared with his disciples what you know we are we we are going to begin uh, talking about today yeah. is, is the way to the Father. Come on. We're, you know, yeah. the way to the Father is what yes. God began to share. Yeah. And we found we you know, we found that laid out in uh, John chapter 14. That's right. So we're gonna be in John chapter 14. So if you have your Bibles. Grab them and turn there, and uh, because we're, the word shares the conversation uh, that was taking place with Jesus, saying, "Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. And if uh, if this were not so, I would have told, not told you uh, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. Come on, he right? Went. Yeah, prepare a place. When everything is ready, I will come and get you." so that you will always be where I am and you know the way to where I am going. And so there was an interesting thing because Thomas said, no, we don't know, Lord. And, and he said, we have no idea where you're going. So how can we fight, know the way? And Jesus replied and said, I've been with you all this time, Philip. Come on. Right? And yet you still don't know who I am. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Mm. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Come on, Come on the they miracles. witnessed all kinds of miracles daily. 
hundreds, thousands even. That's right. So it goes on to say, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Praise the Lord. Ooh. And then Jesus promised the Holy Spirit, didn't he? Yes, right. Come That's on. right. He did. And he said, if you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. Come on. Come on. Who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads to all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, mm. right? But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Yes. Come on. No, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. Amen. Wow. That's so a life. That's God awesome. life. Yeah. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. Mm. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Come on. That's right. Absolutely. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple that was uh, had the same name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. Mm. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. And I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remain remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember, what I told you, I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you will be happy that I'm going to the Father, who is greater than I am. Mm. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches he has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. This all took place just before heading to the Garden of Gethsemane. Come on. Wow. God, he, he gives us the whole way to the Father Absolutely. and everything that's going to happen. Laid it out. You know, our God is a triune God, meaning three in one. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the Holy Spirit always points the way to the Son, which is the door in which mankind must enter in through faith to come to the Father. And our, our accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, mm -hmm. Savior causes us to be able to come into the knowledge of mm -hmm. the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the Holy Spirit abiding within us once we're born again. Yeah, yeah. We've got to go through the door. Come on. Amen. That's right. And the Word tells us that the Holy Spirit teaches us all things pertaining to God. It is the Holy Spirit that shares with us the Father is saying what he's saying and what he's revealing mm -hmm. to us in his word. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us an understanding heart. God gives us an understanding heart through the Holy Spirit of what is good and what is evil. That's right. You know, the Holy Spirit quickens us. Amen. Yes, yes. In Genesis, we find that mankind had grieved God so mm -hmm. much that it, that it repented God that he'd ever made mankind. And the word tells us that the heart of on the minds of almost all mankind was evil continually. Mm. And and there was something else going on there also. Mankind was changing yeah. from God's original creation to a form of a hybrid human race. 
And not many Christians are talking about that, but it's in your word and it's in Genesis. Mm -hmm. You know, the word tells us that the fallen angels were taken, you know, taken the appearance of humanity and uh, taking many women onto themselves and bringing forth a new type of what we would call today a hybrid people. Mm hmm. And many of them grew to be larger in stature, you know, what we call giants. Yeah. Some had several rows of teeth and six fingers and six toes. Come on. Yeah. And and there were giants in the earth in those days. The, you know, the, the word tells us that right in Genesis. And also after that, it says that when the sons of, of God came in unto the daughters of men, that they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Mm -hmm. That means they were huge. Huge. Mm -hmm. you know, the enemy was luring mankind by uh, causing them to want to obtain a knowledge and a power, okay? Luring mankind to be like a little G God, mm -hmm. causing mankind to be like God, but without God's involvement. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, thus being able to mimic the Holy Spirit and the giftings and the power of the God, but without the Holy Spirit. Right. Does it sound familiar? I just want you to think about what's going on with our tech or you know this type of things in the science world today. AI and, and all, all well mm. everything that they're trying to do yeah. and what they are trying to bring forth. You know, we we all have we we got to save that for another yeah, show because right. <laughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right no, now not, because there's yeah. so much to that. That's right. But we I promise you we'll do a show on it yeah, uh, yeah. when God releases us to. Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Noah and his family. Let's stick on let's stick on where we're going now though. Yeah. But we would do want to touch on this. Yes. Because Noah and his family had not left their original state. Yes, that's right. Of creation. Mm -hmm. They their their DNA line and their bloodline had not been interrupted or altered yep. by these fallen angels That's okay right. so right. that was one of the reasons one of the one of the one of the reasons why God singled them out but also uh when God saw that Noah was righteous mm -hmm. okay he was a righteous man and had been listening he had a listening ear and an obedient heart unto God yeah. you know and he, and he held you know, you know God held off the judgments until Noah built that ark mm -hmm. and all that God intended to be in that ark were in it and, and safe. That's okay? right. That's right. Another thing that a lot of people don't understand is that the water that God allowed to come forth over those 40 days and 40 nights was from from the firmament that was surrounding and covering the earth. Mm -hmm. It's a, it was a water covering that was around the whole earth yes. and God caused that firmament to fall mm -hmm. through our atmosphere as rain. And it took 40 days and 40 nights for it to be released onto the earth. The earth, you know, never before, uh, before the flood, had not experienced rain because the earth was like a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. There would be a mist and a fog that would that would come, you know, it would be like a greenhouse. Constantly moisture was was in the air, and God would cause the misty, the mistiness in the air to, to water all the plants of the mm -hmm. earth. But there wasn't there wasn't a hard like a rain. Right. Okay. So right. it was a greenhouse effect, you know, and, and that's why Noah had not experienced rain before the flood. Mm -hmm. And he, so he's built this ark out of sheer faith and sheer obedience to what God said <laughs> that there was going to be rain, that, that right. it was going to rain. Right. And there was going to be a flood because he had never seen anything like that. That's right. Okay. So the rainbow appearing in the sky was a new thing after the flood. And I'm sure that they saw many colors in the sky through the firmament. Even the stars were probably even seen. You, they probably saw them in, in colors because of the water layer that was around the earth mm -hmm. is what the Christian scientists say. But that none of them had ever seen a rainbow. Mm -hmm. They had not. There was no reason for the colors to form a bow. But after God gave some directives for living, um, he had told them when they when, when they came out of the ark, he gave them some directives for living and how to, what they should eat and this and that. And he told them to go forth into the world and multiply. And he, he made an unconditional covenant, an unconditional covenant, uh, you know, not only to Noah and all that came out of the ark, all the, all the, the creatures that came out of the ark, mm -hmm. ark but, but to all humanity and to all wild, wildlife, you know, and to all that, that he had created here. And he, and he gave that covenant, unconditional covenant, for all generations to come mm -hmm. until the end. Right. Amen? Yep. You know, and the Lord, he didn't want his, his children to be fearful every time it rained. Right. That they would think that God would bring forth 
you know, a flood and destroy the earth with a flood again. Right, because the covenant that he made was that he would never do that. That's right. He said he would never do it again yeah. for all generations. That's right. what that covenant was. Right, right. But you know, the Lord didn't want them to be fearful whenever when they, it, whenever when it, it rained, did rain. right? Because they'd only experienced rain one time, and that was for forty days and forty nights. And right. so he 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 wanted to let them know, hey, I'm giving you a token. For my covenant, mm -hmm. and it's to say that I'm never going to do this again. Come on, uh, and you don't have to be fearful mm -hmm. of the of of the rainstorms, the lightning, and thundering, right. because I'm not going to do it. Right. So we see in Genesis nine, eight through seventeen, the word says, "And God spake unto Noah and his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you." of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast on the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Here it, is. it is. Right there. Mm -hmm. So it says, I do not set my bow in the cloud. I do set my I'm, bow. I'm, I'm sorry. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Amen. Come on. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. God is explaining here to them what is going to happen mm -hmm. because they, you know, they had not experienced this, you know, before the flood. Right. This is all new to them. Now, you know, now that the firmament was gone, mm -hmm. everything in the sky probably looked different. Yeah. Um, and so God was wanting to settle their nerves and, yeah. and take the fear away Don't be and give them a token yeah. of a promise. That's right. So he went on to say, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more be a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, and that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Yes. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So here God is giving all humanity and all creation a token of his covenant that he that he would not he would not only uh, that, you know, that they would not only be looking onto this this rainbow and knowing that there was a promise, but he, too, would Wouldn't be looking be able, on this yeah. rainbow and mm -hmm. remembering his promise yeah. to mankind and all the creatures of the world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's very interesting that God called it a bow right. because the Hebrew word for rainbow is kishit. And it is used to describe a war bow, like mm -hmm. a bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. It's no different. Mm -hmm. Rainbow or bow, it's still, it's still right. in the Hebrew language, it's the same. It's the same and, yeah. and when you think of a bow used for war, it, it, it needs... It essentially two things, the bow and the arrow. Mm -hmm. And without the arrow, it's it cannot serve as a weapon. That's right. Okay. That's so right. this this secret this is a really sacred on, symbol for Christianity <laughs> and for the, the Jewish people. This is a sacred token symbol mm -hmm. in our in our Christianity and in our in our Jewish faith mm -hmm. because we serve Jehovah God. Yes. Amen. And um, so it's it's a it's sacred mm -hmm. to us, and uh, and you know the rainbow is and a, a bow without an arrow is therefore a symbol of God's mercy. This is showing us God's unfailable yeah. mercy, yeah. and and a symbol that shows us that even through even though God can destroy the earth with water again, He made an unconditional covenant promise that He would not. Yeah. And there is so much more here to grasp mm. in the you know in the bow. Because the bow is not just a bow, uh, like a single line in the sky that God gave gave to mankind, mm -hmm. gave to every creature. You know, he, cre he created this bow with the colors of his character and his nature. And he created it with the very essence of who he is yes. and who his son is and who the Holy Spirit yes. is. And, and he, he promised us, he made this promise to us, not only with his name, but by and with everything that he is as our triune God. And that's what mm. we want to share with you tonight. So stay with us and Come you're on. going to understand. Each color of the rainbow is symbolic 
of his character, his nature and his attributes. Mm -hmm. And when you know these characteristics and the fullness of the nature of God, you will you will know if if you if what you're seeing, if what you're hearing or if what you're experiencing is coming from the spirit of God mm -hmm. or if it's coming from Satan, mm -hmm. a demonic spirit, or if it's coming from the spirit of man. That's you're right. going to be able to rightly discern uh, much better if you know God's character and his spirit. Come on. Amen. Amen. And his Amen. attributes and his nature. Yes. So let's take a look at where else we can find the rainbow in scripture. You know, it's around God's throne. Absolutely. And it we is. see in Revelation chapter four, it says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Come on, that was the yep, Lord. That was the Lord. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had the face of a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle and the four beasts each uh, had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying holy 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 lord god almighty which was and is and is to come Woo hallelujah. hallelujah and then rose uh, then those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that, that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Oh, Come me, on. Yeah. Oh, so me, the yeah. rainbow was also seen around God on his throne. And, and Ezekiel saw it in his vision. Yes, he did. So we're going to see right here. And, all, and, and on this throne, high above, was a figure whose appearance resembled a man from what appeared to be his waist up. Mm -hmm. He looked like gleaming amber, flickering like fire. Come on. And from his waist down, he looked like a burning flame shining with splendor. All around him was a glowing halo mm -hmm. like a rainbow shining in the clouds on a rainy day. This is that. This is what the glory of the Lord looked like to me. When I saw it, I fell down face uh, down on the ground and I heard someone's voice speaking to me. Come on, Come that's on. Ezekiel's account. That is of seeing amazing. God. So you're seeing it right there. The rainbows mentioned being surrounding the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now that we've established that the rainbow is always around God mm -hmm. and was in heaven long before God placed it in our sky as a token of his promise to us, we hope that by now that you sense a greater significance for what you're looking at Come in on. the sky. Amen. Right. And you know, we're going to give you one more before we go into the colors. Revelation uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John to the seven churches which were in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from, from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before the throne. Mm -hmm. And in these seven spirits are his attributes, his characteristics, mm -hmm. his nature. That's Amen. Right. Right. There is but Amen. one Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but this is showing you mm -hmm. right here. And, uh, and it goes on to say, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of this earth unto him that loved us 
and washed us from our sins mm -hmm. in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and in his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen yes. behold he cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen mm -hmm. the Lord says I am the alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, come the Almighty. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's talk about the significance of the colors of the rainbow and how each color depicts one of these seven spirits of God, which we find in Revelation. We're going to show you slide one. Slide one. Uh, we're just going to show it for just a, a moment because we're going to really come back around to this one. Red is the is the first and principal color. I mean, what the the first thing you think of is the blood of Jesus, right? Amen. Yeah, amen. But red is is the first and the and the principal color in the rainbow, and the spirit it's the spirit of discernment. It you know, the spirit of this this discernment is something that we're going to cover. However, we're going to be we're going to follow. It, it after the other colors mm -hmm. um, it, because we're going to take it a little bit out of order because we're going to follow the order of of how these uh, spirits are uh, shown in scripture in Isaiah mm -hmm. 11 1 through 3 um, but but it um, these are the seven spirits of God there's are the seven characteristics attributes of his divine nature you know there's but there's only one holy spirit one. That's right. you know in describing the Lord Jesus Christ in prophesying about his coming and what God's going to do with the, you know, through, through his son, Lord Jesus Christ. This was prophesied over 700 years before yeah. he was even born. Yeah. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 11, 1 through 3, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom. And understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove reprove with equity equality like equality you know making it this equal for for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with a rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Lord Father is going, I mean, when Jesus comes, it's, it, he's just speaking. Mm -hmm. It's the sword comes from his mouth. That's right. Come he on. speaks, and that's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. So we're going to we're going to start here. We're going to talk about the seven spirits of God and the attributes of the characteristics depicted uh, that you see in the Lord. But we also want you to be mindful mm -hmm. that if, <laughs> if you're seeing these attributes coming forth through a person or through uh, a movement or through a government uh, or, you know, that people are being led, they're being led by God's spirit because mm -hmm. they have these attributes. So these these this nature is coming forth. However. If there is attributes and characteristics that are depicted in a person, a government, uh, a people, or a movement that is opposite of what what we're what we're going to be depicting out of these colors on God on what what shows us what God has in His nature, then that's coming from Satan. Right. And so we're going to share both to you today. Yeah. So the the uh, slide number two, we're going to be looking at the wisdom. Wisdom is orange. It's the it's the second color in the rainbow, and it stands for intelligence. Listen, wi the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, is the beginning of wit. Uh, you know, the, the spirit of it's the the um the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right, Amen. Right. So the wisdom of the Lord is to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. God gives His and imparts wisdom to mankind. Amen. Mm -hmm. So. This is a greater wisdom than we could obtain or right, have on absolutely. our own. This is yeah. this is God's wisdom. Okay, yeah. his and thoughts his, are not our thoughts, and higher. his ways are not our ways. They're higher than Come our on. thoughts. So this is yeah. a spirit of wisdom that is much higher than than the humanity could handle and or yeah. could could conjure up on their Absolutely. own or come up with anything. I mean, right. it's an intelligence that has foresight. Um, and, and judgment, right, right judgment, mm -hmm. um, is sophistication, caution, mm -hmm. and prudence. That's okay? right. That's right. So if 
you've got a person, a government, or uh, or a movement, or a situation like you know that you're in, and these types of attributes are coming forth, and you can say, ah, oh, I see God moving here. Right. But it, the opposite of that would be Come what? On. So we're going to look at the spirits that depict Satan as well. So the first one, which we saw that what depicted God with with orange, it's thoughtlessness on Satan inside. It's instability and it's stupidity and ignorance. So it's all the opposites. Right. And so if 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 someone is is uh, displaying or a movement or a government is displaying thought thoughtlessness instability, yeah. stupidity, and ignorance that mm-hmm. is being driven by, by the, the spirit devil. of the devil. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so orange is wisdom. It's the spirit of wisdom. We're going to uh, be moving on to the next one. It's, um, it's, it's yellow and yellow. It depicts the spirit of understanding. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a greater understanding. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's, and, and it's, it's an awareness uh, that grasp insight and knowledge and perception high above the what humankind can 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 come up with and yeah, uh, so yellow is the spirit of understanding yes amen so if, if, a, if a human a person or a government or a movement is is showing forth awareness grasping truth has great insight knowledge and perception you know, can really understand, then this is this is the spirit of understanding and, and this is something that God is is leading. And then the opposite of that would be misunderstanding, disbelief, disagreement, misinterpretation, and mistakes. Come on. Come on. So I mean, once again, if you see a, a, a person or or a movement or a people or a government that is doing something that is uh, the opposite of what it really stands for uh, as a characteristic of God, you will be able to see it by the mistakes that they're making. Right. The misunderstanding that they're bringing. Yes. Right? The disbeliefs that they're sowing and the disagreement that's being conjured and the misinterpretation of things. Yes, twisting truth. I mean, twisting truth. Come on. So, so this, I hope you guys are getting this. You're gonna grab more. <laughs> you're gonna grab more uh, in that than is being taught, and you'll be able to grab more uh, in the spirit. Amen. So number three, uh, the or the uh, is the council, the spirit of council, and this is green. This is this yes, is, uh, the, the color, color green. green. So number this four. Four. Um, the it's, fourth it's, slide. Yeah. yeah, it's the fourth slide, but yep. it's 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 the third color down. It's, it's the third, uh, third characteristic. characteristic. I'm sorry, the fourth color down, but it's yeah. the yeah. So it's the it's the council, the spirit of council, and it's green and and it's the forethought, consideration, uh, advancement. You 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 get a, a great advancement, Holy mm-hmm. Spirit advancement, supernatural advancement, direction, supernatural direction, uh, deliberation, uh, warning, again, and instruction. Mm-hmm. To um to admonish God, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. So so it's the spirit of cancel, and the spirit of cancel is green. So on the opposite of that side would be negligence, uh, heedlessness, carelessness, disregard, uh, licentiousness, unrestraint, uh, wildness, mm-hmm. wantonness, Amen. Anarchy, forwardness arrogance and lasciviousness because that's like the uh, lust of the flesh right. and, and really fulfilling whatever they want to do. Okay. Uh, Amen. That's any right. Any type of lust. It yep. feels good. Yep. Amen. Self-indulgence, slackness. I mean, there's, there's so many things uh, that are op- that you can see in the opposite side that we see today. Yes. So, yes, yeah, so negligence is the opposite of the spirit of, of counsel. The spirit of counsel. Amen. That's right. And in all of these sub sub things, sub spirits are really tied to that. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So heedlessness, they're not they're not cautionary. Uh they're careless with what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um they they disregard any rules or regulations. That's right. They're following after their flesh and yep. you know. So this the the spirit of counsel is green and the next color is blue. 
we're going to be talking about blue here. Uh, the, the spirit, it's the spirit of might. Mm -hmm. Now, this type of might is not just about being strong and barreling your way through. Um, th this type of might is strong. Don't get me wrong. And it's powerful. Um, this type of might that it is part of God's character and his attributes and his nature. But it also stands for productiveness, mm -hmm. valor, boldness, courage. They're courageous. Amen. Yes. Determination, fearlessness, not going to back down to mm -hmm. the enemy. Mm -hmm. Fearlessness, firmness and strength of mind, not not clouded, not, not cloudy minded, but strength of mind, just strength of mind and having guts, mm -hmm. not being a coward, mm -hmm. you know, skill and ability, bravery and even tenacity. Come so on. this this is all tied to the spirit of might which blue stands for that's right and then the opposite of that would might is fear mm. cowardice and weakness delay and doubt wavering in your understanding and your any and everything that you're you do wavering in your decisions idleness lack lethargy helplessness and inadequacy and incompetence so again, this the spirit of might is blue. Yeah. And it's not just barreling through. It's not just uh it's not just the power of God, which he is so powerful. There's no yeah. one power more powerful than he is. But but to that power is productiveness, mm -hmm. valor, boldness, courageous, a courageous spirit, um, determination and fearlessness, Come being on. firm and, and strength of mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to move on to the next one. The next one is the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge is the color of indigo. Indigo is a type of purple. It's a purpley color. Mm -hmm. uh, it's different than violet, but mm -hmm. it's uh, it's right there close to the end of the rainbow. And, uh, and it's the spirit of knowledge. And under the spirit, it was tied to the spirit of knowledge. This is God's knowledge. This is knowledge that is far beyond our knowledge. Right, it's right. something God can give knowledge to us that uh, think that let us know things that there's no way that human possibly we we'd be able to know human it, we, humanly possible we wouldn't be able to know it. Right. And then so yeah. God drops that knowledge in us, yeah. you know, by the His Spirit. So this is this is a spirit of knowledge. He knows everything. Come there's on. nothing that He doesn't know. Past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that he doesn't already know. That's right. I mean, okay, so this is the spirit of knowledge. And um, ex what ties to that is experience, education, uh, profic proficiency, uh, ability, awareness, grasp, um, insight, judgment, and, and intelligence, and observation. That's Amen? right. Yeah. And, you know, not, not only experience, but expertise. Yes. Being the, the at the top, yes. Right? Okay. So, and the opposite of this is ignorance, and it's uh, clumsiness, unproductiveness, barrenness, unbelief, stupidity, silliness, foolishness, mm. absurdity, insanity, and incompetence. That's the opposite. That is the opposite of the characteristic of knowledge. So. The spirit of ignorance is the opposite of the spirit of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then that mm -hmm. makes sense. Amen. Absolutely. So the the next one, the last uh, color of the rainbow at the bottom, and then we're going to go back to red, is violet. And uh, in violet, it's another type of purple, and it, it stands for the spirit that causes a, 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 an honor I mean, it's like a, it's a reverential fear of God. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, and uh, and it causes us to have a reverential honoring fear of God, understanding that we're small, right? And he's not. <laughs> um, he's in control, and we're not. Right. Amen. Come and uh, and it it helps us to know our place. Mm -hmm. That whole that the, the that that uh, spirit of reverential fear of God is not something that's going to cause you to run in fear like like the devil would right it's it's it, it causes you to bow in holy reverence mm -hmm. come on amen yeah that's the type of of of, of thing that that this spirit causes reverence all of god mm -hmm. devotion it causes loyalty and respect and adoration uh, you know just really ad ad admiring 
the Lord. Um, it causes us to believe in him more when we feel his weighty presence. Amen. That's you know, right. the, the zeal and obedience, uh, the zeal for the Lord, obedience to God. Um, so it, it, uh, it causes us to have an allegiance unto the Lord That's right. and uh, faith and love, uh, the love of God. And this is this is the color violet, mm -hmm. and it's the 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 color means the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the opposite of that uh, is rebellion. Rebellion. That's right. So the 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 opposite of knowledge is rebellion, and it's dishonor, hate, uh, criticism, uh, disregard, dislike, condemnation, blame, disloyal, uh, unbelief, mm -hmm. uprising. Uh, apostasy, uh, estrangement from God, uh, abandonment of his word. Come on. So, I mean. It, That's everything you can, opposite. You can this see is... these things in the earth today. Yes. Being driven by the devil. Yes. The spirit in, of rebellion. In, in these likenesses of him and his characteristics, you can see that. And you can also see. In God, his characteristic side. Oh, oh Satan, what are you talking about? Satan's yeah. characteristic. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, and you can see them at work today. Mm -hmm. You really can. Again, you absolutely can. Yeah. It's, it, it is a fine line between uh, good and evil. Absolutely. And uh, and the evil is calling good, uh, evil good and, and good evil. That's right. All right so we're going to go back to the principal one, uh, which is the, uh, is with slide number eight, but it's, it's really the first color in the rainbow and it's the color red. Mm -hmm. uh, red stands for the spirit of discernment. And I, uh, and right here, uh, you know, we understand that in in uh, Isaiah, Isaiah named it last uh, in this in this um, scripture reference here. It's you know he names it last, and I'm going to read this one more time because it's on me to do so. Um, but this the spirit of, of discernment. It's it's like the gift of discerning of spirits. Okay, the 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 Lord discerns not after natural senses, right. but He discerns rightly and He judges righteously and he judges with a holy righteous judgment he knows the heart of man mm -hmm. he knows your motives he knows why you made the decision you made mm -hmm. he knows what led up to the decision that you made come on and so it what may look like it, it you it was an impulse or or that you meant to do something god knows every motive and intention of your heart mm -hmm. even if something turned out bad but you meant well God knows that. Mm -hmm. And so he rightly judges us because he knows our heart. That's right. He knows why we did things. Yes. Amen. Yes. So it says in Isaiah 11, 1 through 3, that, you know, that that uh, we find that he will not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And and so that's, that's the type of discernment we're talking about. Spiritual discernment, insight, judgment true judgment, the ability to understand and reason, brilliance also, Come on. red stands for brilliance, uh, you know, intellect, um, uh, awareness, complete awareness, having complete open vision, um, intelligence above, way above all of us, um, uh, event, uh, it, being able to uh, invent things, so mm -hmm. the Lord will give, give invent, inventiveness, talent, um, and excellence and inspiration Come on. to his people. Yes. Amen. So red does depict the spirit of discernment. Amen. Amen. And so what is the opposite of the spirit of discernment? So the opposite of that would be unsoundness, uh, stupidity again, <laughs> lack, failure, shortcoming, inefficiency, disqualification, frailty, powerlessness, and unfitness. Come on. Come on. I mean, you're not fit to hold the office. <laughs> <laughs> There's a problem. That you're in. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh -huh. so we really wanted to bring this forth to you today because we know that the enemy has twisted uh, a lot of things. Yeah. And, um, and when people are waving something so sacred, to Christianity and the Jewish people that actually depicts 
the very essence of Jehovah God. Yeah. His character, his attributes, mm -hmm. everything about his spirit and who he is, who the Father God, Creator God is, who the who the Lord Jesus Christ is, who the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. unto us, our triune God. Mm -hmm. And and taking the colors of of such a sacred covenant promise mm -hmm. to us, mm -hmm. his people, and and then turning it into something that it, it was never meant to be. Right. Waving the depiction of who he is, which this is the rainbow that's around his throne. Come on. This is the rainbow that's around his presence. Yes. This he he gave us the pre the, the this promise by everything that he is. Mm -hmm. And the devil has taken this sacred thing and made it into something that is waved in the face of our Jehovah God. Yeah thumbing their noses at him and saying, we are okay and prideful in the situation that we're in. Right. Yeah. And, and listen, yes, they, they don't, people, these, not everyone wants to live by our God's standards, but this, this is not okay to every Christian and every born again believer, every Jewish person believer mm -hmm. that loves Jehovah God. This is not okay. And to those that didn't have any understanding of the rainbow and what the colors really are representing, now you know. Now you know. And so if you've had a check in your spirit and it's made yeah. you just kind of, you know, you throw your head back and forth and you're going, that was that was a for our promise. Yeah. It's much more than that. It's much more. It, 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 yes, it was a promise. God could have just put a line in the sky and said, there's your promise. Right. It looks like a little cloud. But no, God gave us the promise with everything that he is. Yes. And he says, I am promising you by not only my name, but everything that I am. Everything. And I'm putting my glory in your, in your sky mm -hmm. as a bow without an arrow mm -hmm. to show you my incredible mercy. Yes. Come that on. I will never do that again. Right. So this is a sacred thing to our to our faith, to right. our journey with God. And um and I know that it offends God. Amen. Because the the enemy is not only railing against uh God the Father, but God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. That's right. And we have to remember the promise that God gave to not flood the earth with water is something that he will uh uphold. Yes. That promise. But scripture tells us that the earth is reserved for fire. That's right. That's right. He, he has told the us The next that. time the earth is destroyed, it will be with fire. Yes, amen. And that is in the word. Yes. <laughs> so, so there's still judgments that are coming. There's still judgment. There is still judgments coming. We're still under the, just, just, uh, the dispensation of grace. So how do we respond? Do we respond with anger? Do we? How do we respond? I think that we need to respond by allowing other Christians and other Jewish uh, brothers and sisters know the truth about the rainbow. Right. That that we uh, teach others the truth mm -hmm. about the depiction of of our God's character and nature within every color. Amen. Teach our children, teach our young people the truth. Yes. So that their truth will set them free. Amen. And also, you know, others that you know that are angry at this world and they they just don't know what they're doing. I mean they're they're being driven uh to do other things. Um, you know, what does God say? He says don't judge them. That's right. He, you know, God's the judge. He's the judge. He knows how much grace that they're under. He mm -hmm. knows when their grace time is over yeah. and he gives people over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. But he says, don't judge them. Yeah. Uh, we are to love people, but to hate the them. sin. Yeah. But you know what? Sin doesn't go to hell. People go to hell. Yeah. We are supposed to offer the truth when people want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to hear it, what does God tell you when the city doesn't receive you? He says, "Wipe off your feet and walk. Go on." Yeah. And um. And you know, we're not we're not ones that are out there, um, judging people and and yelling at people and and, and acting that way. That's not our reaction as Christians. We mm -hmm. are to love people into the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. and those that will lend an ear and have an open heart to mm -hmm. receive. Uh, let them know what the word of God says in truth. Yeah, we're to love them and let God clean them up. 
Amen. You you go he's fishing. He's the one that he's the only one that can do what he does. You go fishing and let yeah. God clean the fish. Amen. There you go. Because That's it right we're there. supposed to be cast the net to yeah. catch every kind every, of fish. Every kind of fish. And and, uh, and I'm gonna you know, we've got a, a minute or two, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say these few other things. They're not in our notes, but you know, the Lord we have standards to live by, and the Lord says, do not be uh, do not go uh, commit for an occasion. Okay. What's for an occasion? We're not supposed to um, have intimate relations, physical intimate relationships with another person outside the bonds of holy matrimony. Yeah. That's a sin. That's right. Um, if, if you are doing that with another person outside of the bonds of marriage uh, and, and you're not married to that person, that is committing adultery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you commit... Um, if you commit murder, you you know you're committing murder. Why does it say commit, commit, commit? Because you're you are actually committing a a sin. You're com not only committing a sin, but An you're committing offense. a offense and a yep. crime right. against God yep. when you are not obeying mm -hmm. His commandments. Come okay, That's but right. that that sin is your not your identity. Come on, your identity changes when you repent and ask God to forgive you of that sin and that sin is washed completely mm -hmm. away. So maybe you, uh, you committed, um, a, a robbery. Okay. Yeah. So, so, uh, you're not really labeled a thief. If you repent, you, you can, you fessed up, you can, you fessed up to the Lord. You, you, you took responsibility mm -hmm. and, um, and God washed those sins away. You, no one can, can label you and, and you don't need to take on in your identity that you're a thief. That's right. Right. That's right. So, uh, same with an adulterer, you know, that person's no longer an adulterer if they repented yeah. and got cleaned up and got God, got God wiped those sins away. They're yeah. no more, they're not labeled or that's not part of their identity. Yeah. Well, the problem in our culture today is, is the enemy has taken a sin that is something that has committed a crime against God's laws and standards and his teaching the people that are in that sin or enjoying that sin, that it's part of their identity. Right. And the truth is Jack's still Jack and Jill's still Jill whether they committed a robbery or committed a murder mm -hmm. or or not, they're still Jack or Jill. Right. They're they're not um, you know, all of a sudden now they're not Jack anymore, they're a murderer. Right. And 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 their name goes below that murder thing is, is underneath. Right. No, that Jack's still Jack. Yes. Okay, so if right. if, if he fesses up and he pays the con the consequences and mm -hmm. he asks God to forgive him, his those sins are wiped away and Come on. and it's not even part of his labeling. Right. Yep. No more than Paul the tent maker. Look, Paul the Paul the apostle was still Paul the apostle, whether he was a tent maker or a baker. Right. So when people go out and they commit a sin and the enemy is trying to tag that sin as a part of who they are, as mm -hmm. their identity, mm -hmm. that then it makes it harder to to uh, bring them back to truth because then when you're coming against the sin, they think that you're coming against that, their mm, identity. First, right. So the first yeah. thing you have to do is to pray and ask the Lord to restore their identity, Yeah. restore to them their identity and pull down the falseness mm -hmm. of the lie that the sin is actually who they are. Come on. Amen. So that's, that's what I would say. To, to help anyone that is suffering uh, with a family member or a friend that you're trying to bring back to the word of God and get back into covenant with yeah. the Lord that's dealing with any type of sin. And, and, we, then, and we need to remember one thing. We are created in the likeness of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Every one of us, each and every one of us is created in the likeness of the Father. That's right. And Amen. we are all equal in his eyes. That's right. We are all his sons and daughters. Yes. We're we're not grandchildren. We're not cousins. No. We're sons and we're daughters. There's no grandchildren. God no. doesn't have grandchildren. No. No, he, he has doesn't. he has sons and daughters. And he has sons and daughters. Amen. So you can't ride in on your parents' coattails. Yep. 
or Aunt Betty's coattails, right. or Aunt or Uncle Joe. Come on. You got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for yourself. Yeah. You have to have your own personal relationship with Him. You don't get just to go in on a free ride because because someone in your family is serving the Lord. Come Although on. God does extend mercy and grace, mm -hmm. we exhort you today get your own relationship with the Lord. Amen. And don't delay. And let that intimate relationship be your identity as a son or a daughter. That's right, because your identity <laughs> is found in him. That's right. You don't even know who you are or your purpose in this life until you find out who he is. Mm. Wow. When you find out who the Lord Jesus Christ is, the Holy yeah. Spirit reveals to you your purpose and your identity. Amen. Amen. We've got well, some other messages on that, on that, but it'll be for right. another time. That's right. But we want to pray for you today that you have received this information, you receive the revelation of the colors that depict God's character, his Amen. nature and his attributes, the spirits, the seven spirits before the throne of God. These are, this is who, the essence of who our God is. Amen. Amen. Yep. So Lord Father, we just pray for every viewer today. Yes. We ask Lord Father that you cause this revelation to burn yes. in their hearts, Lord Father, that it will not depart from them. Lord Father, we apply the blood of Jesus over every viewer today. Yes. Lord God, open their ears to hear your voice in a loud, mighty way, Lord God. Yes. Lord Father, unstop their ears from your voice. Yes. Lord Father, open Give them the the, the uh, eye salve from heaven, Lord God. Anoint their eyes to see in the spirit. Yes. Lord Father, they could see what you're conveying to them from heaven. Lord Father, we, we speak to over their lives right now. We decree that visions increase, that their dreams and visions from heaven increase, similitudes increase. In the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, Lord Father, the discerning of spirits, yes. Lord Father, the gift of discerning of spirits, we loose that to them now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sure. So they, this gift meant will be a, be a activated in yes. our viewers today, Lord God, that they will be able to rightly discern what is good and evil, rightly discern what spirit is coming forth out of the person or the government or the movement that they're looking yes. at, whatever they're looking at or seeing or hearing or experiencing, they will know, Lord God, whether it's coming out of the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the devil, the enemy, or of the spirit of man. Yes. And we thank you for that. We seal that to them now in yes. the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you know, if you have not ever asked Jesus to come into your heart, we want to ask them to ask them to go through the prayer of salvation with us real quick. Did Amen. You, would you would you lead them through that? Absolutely. It, all you have to do is just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe that you're the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And you died. And you died. And rose again. And rose again. For me. For me. And I accept. And I accept the gift. The gift of my salvation. Of my salvation. That you paid. That you. Paid. The biggest price for the biggest price for and I and I will live my life will live my life from this day forward from this day forward for you for you come into my heart come into my heart and live inside of me and live inside of me forgive me my sins forgive me of all my sins. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for that. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Amen. If you've said that, welcome, welcome, brother and sister. You really mean it in your heart. And you mean it in your heart. Today is the day. Mark the time. Mark the date. This is the day that you have received a gift of salvation. Amen. You've, you've passed from the from darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. This is the day that your, your name amen. was written in the Lamb's Book of Come Life. Come on, let us know. That that was you, uh, and 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 uh, that you have a testimony of your salvation today. Let yes. us know. We'd like to share in your we joy and happiness. Yes. Please please comment. Let us know. Amen. Amen. So we just want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here at High Tower Ministries International for our Testimony Tuesday's broadcast. And we truly hope that this show has edified and encouraged you in the Lord. Amen. And if you live in the Tidewater area, maybe you live in North Carolina. Uh, maybe Maryland, somewhere close by that you can get to the Virginia Beach area. Uh, we are having a very special night of greater glory coming up on Saturday, August the 26th at 7 p.m. It's going to be held at Go Church at 333 Edwin Drive in the resort city of Virginia Beach. And it's going to be a night that you're not going to want to miss. Amen. That's right. And it will be an evening of healing, empowerment, and impartations. Yes. Come on. So plan to join us and pastors. Bring your group out. We would love to meet you and plan to join us 
as we come together in the Lord's presence. Amen. Amen. You know, and if this ministry has blessed, been a blessing to your life, prayerfully consider becoming a partner with High Tower Ministries. You know, this is good ground. We've had some new uh, new partners come on. I mean, even if mm -hmm. it's just a few dollars a month, mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a couple of them just have a few dollars a month. You know, we've got so many followers on Amen. Facebook, and if everyone just gave a dollar, mm -hmm. could you imagine the amount the of impact. work that the impact that we could be impacting the globe if, if all of you could just do a dollar a month? Come I mean, on. honestly, but God knows your heart. He knows uh, those that can give a little and those that can give much more than that. Yeah. But we want you to know that this is good ground, Amen. and people are, are, are really getting multiplied as they're giving into this ministry Amen. in every area of their life. Yeah. They're getting breakthrough financially, but also their family is coming into the knowledge That's of right. God. And, right. uh, there's so many awesome miracles, words of knowledge, words of prophetic insight is coming forth. Mm -hmm. There's just so much great healing, healing, and, and we're, getting, we're seeing miracles, lots of miracles and, and uh, in healings and, and everyone's in their bodies yeah. that we're praying for. So we're just encouraging you, get connected with get High Tower connected. because God is moving in a <laughs> mighty way through this ministry yeah. and you will not uh, be disappointed in what God will do for you. Amen. Absolutely. And it's easy to get connected with us. You just go to Linktree, it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E backslash High Tower Ministries. You put in link tree and high tower you know, high tower ministries and you'll find all of our tabs there so you'll you, you can figure out where we're going to be for our sunday morning worship services mm -hmm. our revival services and any special ministry events that we have come on and you'll be linked directly to our high tower ministries facebook page as well with a click of a button and uh, you can enjoy a five broadcasts going out each week there mm -hmm. live services greater glory broadcasts for prophetic preaching and teaching for apostolic training and discipleship. And of course, our Testimony Tuesdays show with yes. special guests from around the world. We have some generals in the faith and fivefold ministers that are going to be joining us here uh, in, the, in the coming weeks, yes. uh, lay people as well. Uh, and they are joining us to testify and to share what the Lord has given to them. And, yes. and you know, there's just so much there when you go to the Linktree Hightower Ministries uh, page. We've got an incredible lineup. Do, it, do not miss the shows that are coming through from High Tower Ministries. We have an incredible lineup for Amen. you. You know, also you can take us on the go. We've got WDN podcasts that go out three times a week. So you, there's a there's also a button there you can push and get connected to all of our podcasts. We have hundreds of podcasts that are archived there for your spiritual growth, and they're free uh, podcasts. So That's just right. download them and enjoy them. Absolutely, take us on the go. And please make sure you go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Yes. Hit that subscription button so That's you right. don't miss a show there either. Uh, we have new uploads that go out each week at High Tower Ministries YouTube channel. So Amen. please go there and subscribe. We are just now really starting putting some effort into YouTube. We yeah. haven't we haven't really put a lot of en energy into YouTube over the years, but but we are now. So uh, so be looking out to some special things coming forth Absolutely. on the YouTube uh, channel for High Tower, and also we're launching a new, brand new website soon which will have a, have something very special for our partners that yes. other people won't get. Ooh. So uh, there's going to be some neat Come things on, there uh, incentives to you. And if you have a personal prayer request that you don't want to comment, and I understand that sometimes things are sensitive, you can email us. And there is a tab on the link tree that you can just email us directly. That's right. And just know that we are praying for you. And we'll, we'll respond to you. Amen. You know? That's right. So pastors, we're available. If we'd like to be part of your conference schedule or your ministry schedule, if you'd like for us to come to your church and be a guest ministry, just reach out to us at bookings at hightowerministry.org. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to share this with your friends. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the High Tower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for Hightower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcast and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.